uh, whether man, woman, girl, boy, old man, old woman, I don't care. Everybody has, as a Christian, a responsibility to walk in the spirit, just like Enoch did. And even greater than Enoch, just like the Apostle Paul. And even greater than that, just like Jesus Christ, according to Peter, that we walk after his steps. We have a responsibility. And we have a responsibility, okay, if we came out of the world, not to be moaning and whining and crying like we want to go back. I mean, you see some testimonies of some people, and you think they want to go back to where they came from. It's almost like they're crying that they want to go back. Ah! No, you don't do that. You show the glory of Christianity. You show the grandeur, the greatness, the glory, the ecstasy. That's what you show. You don't say, oh, you know, what happened to me? And, and they don't want me to come back. Well, so what? You leave, even if it cause, causes your death as an unbeliever, and even if it causes your death as a believer, okay? That's what's the that's the deal, okay? Christianity, of course, you have to do things as a Christian. Absolutely. But what we say as Orthodox Christians, we say that you don't do these things in order to become saved or a child of God. You can't do and let me get it straight, okay? There is nothing that no one on this green earth can do to go to heaven or have eternal life or please God, period, as an unbeliever. You can sweat and pray and join a uh, hundred congregations, and God doesn't want that, though. Now, when you become saved, that's a different thing, though, because you're a child of God. You're adopted. You're in grace. Then whatever good things you do is accepted, not for a payment, for salvation, but for an appreciation demonstrated to God that you love him and that you love God's people. That's why the church is important, because it's a community of believers. We all think the same way. We trust in Christ, and we believe in him, and that's why we come together to worship him. That's another thing that I didn't say just now, before. You come together to worship, to give him the worship that, he's de that he deserves. And that's why worship is a lazy pronunciation of worship. It's actually W-O-R-T-H-S-H-I-P. Okay, worship. Because God is worth our worship. Either here or, you know, in what we call a church. But we Christians, uh, you know, you know, are the church, though. Ecclesia, the called out ones. There's no such thing as a building that's a church. That's why the Bible says the church that's in their house. It says it several times in the Bible. And, in in, you know, in a couple of the letters of Paul and, and even in the Acts of the Apostles. But absolutely, there are things to do. We are going to be fruitful as Christians. We are going to give forth fruit. We have to give the, our testimony according to the, uh, to the scriptures that, and we are going to confess his name. We are not going to be ashamed of Jesus' name in a sinful, adulterous generation because he's going to be ashamed of us. That's what he said, though. And don't you think that there are not penalties in the Christian life if we do not walk with God? Absolutely, there are. Just because I say uh, one saved, always saved, and I believe it because that's what the Bible says. Jesus is not a liar, and he says that he gives unto us eternal life, and we shall never perish, period. And if you don't like it, that's your problem, though. I don't care. If Jesus said that I cannot be plucked out of his hand, I cannot be plucked out of the Father's hand, he and the Father are one, what am I going to complain no, I show appreciation. No, I don't make a license to sin. But you you believe what God says. That's it. I went to a church one day, and I heard, uh, you know, not a pastor, but it was a Bible teacher 
It was a Spanish uh, Pentecostal church, you know, a few blocks away from here. And, uh, you know, and I heard him say that we can lose salvation. And I took him aside after, you know, the, 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 you know, the, um, the class. And I said to him, why are you teaching that you can lose eternal life? I mean, the Bible doesn't teach that. First of all, the Bible teaches us the opposite. And in, in other words, don't tell me about Hebrews chapter 6, because it says right after it says those gruesome things to the unbeliever. Well, beloved, I know this is not true of you. That's what it says. And then I asked him, well, why are you not teaching what the Bible says? Why are you teaching that we can lose eternal life? And then he said, Oh, I know the Bible teaches that, but I can't say that to the to the people. I said, why? Well, because the thing is that they're going to think that they can do whatever they want. And that's not your problem, though. You teach the whole counsel of God, even if it causes your death. Okay. Paul said that he gave the whole counsel of God to the Ephesian church in chapter 20, verse 28. He didn't say what he wanted to say. But there's so many pastors these days and Bible teachers, so-called, that are preaching the way they, in, in the style of their boring, unfilled, spirit-like presentations that you think that their sermons came from Wall Street. I call it Wall Street Christianity. I really do. Eh. It's disgusting, though. These boring presentations, instead of being filled with the Spirit of God, with joy and ecstasy and all that, you know. But I, I call it Bloomberg Christianity. He's a nice guy, Bloomberg, but i just given an example. I call it Bloomberg Wall Street Christianity. You know, that's what I say. That's another thing. That instead of preaching in the blend of the recipe of, yes, gentleness, gentleness and respect, I understand that. But also uh, boldness and authority, according to uh, Ephesians, you know, chapter six and, and verse eighteen and nineteen. I mean, we get First Peter three fifteen right, but we don't blend it with boldness and power. And Jesus spoke with authority, not like the scribes, and they 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 marveled at it. Okay, they didn't understand it. Of course, the scribes didn't have no power. They don't know authority of God. They didn't. Anyway, guys, okay, I mean, I could literally go on and on and on and on and on. So let me just end over here. Everybody understands where I'm coming from. The Jehovah Witnesses, they teach that we are not the true, okay, uh, congregation because Jehovah has, has chosen them, you know, came to restore, uh, you know, a corrupt uh, church, according to Tony, in, you know, 1918 or 1919. And, 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 you know, he picked the Watchtower Society. Okay. I don't know. How could Jesus pick something like that as a, as a representation? Now, you know, now he picks the worst of people. I understand that. But never Jesus is going to say, I pick this organization over that organization. He doesn't start with organizations. He starts with individuals' hearts, redeems them, plants his seed in that heart, and is gonna is gonna is gonna um fall on either rocky ground, stony ground, you know, thorny ground, shallow ground, good ground, according to the parables of the kingdom in Matthew 13. And once that seed is planted in your heart, you will give forth good fruit. You will. You will abide in the vine. You will walk with God. And if you don't as a Christian, well, there are consequences. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and so on. 1 John chapter 5. The sin unto death. We just can't approach, you know, the Lord's table in any way. First Corinthians chapter 11. This is the Lord's table, the Lord's supper. We don't just say we come in there like, you know, oh, why do you have anything to eat in my house? I'm just going to eat, okay, and be married. No, I mean, it has to be very respectful. You eat and drink unworthily? Well, that's why many are weak, sick, and they drop dead. And 
Ananias and Sapphira is an example of what God does to Christians, okay, that cross him. So I'm here to present everything of Christianity, that, that, that there is a responsibility of the Christian, that the Christian is guaranteed, okay, a place in heaven according to the, promise, uh, the promises that are found in Holy Scripture, okay? But there are, yes, consequences, okay, uh, to, the, to the Christian who doesn't repent of sin here on earth. I understand that. But don't judge, okay? This is to the Watchtower Society, and with this I close. Don't judge other people, okay? Cool your own soup, okay? Get your closet right with God. Then you can judge us. A, take the plank, okay, out of the captain's pirate ship out of your own eye. Then you can see clearly you take the toothpick out of my own eye, right? That's just the deal. Don't be judging me. Get your get your uh, clubhouse straight and in order. A, that's just the deal. I mean, get your house in order. Then you can judge me, right? That's just the deal. True religion I love the way Julian spoke to me the other day. Ex Jehovah Witness, all right? That's just a deal. Uh, Julian Watson and, 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 and see his website. I mean, um, you know, on YouTube. Try to subscribe to it. Uh, Julian, I think it's J-U-L-I-A-N Watson, all right? I think it's W-A-T-S-O-N. Ex Jehovah Witness has uh, some videos and stuff and testimonies and stuff like that. You understand? That's just a deal. But cool your own soup, okay? Then you can judge me. Now, don't say that I don't have the Holy Spirit. Make sure you got the Holy Spirit, all right? What are you judging me for? Oh, I don't think you have the Holy Spirit. Well, don't, don't judge me. I think the same thing as you, of you, okay? We're the standoff. Everybody who confesses that Jesus has not come in the flesh is not of God, period. And Tony said that he doesn't believe in the incarnation. Well, there you go. Listen, Tony, if you're listening to this, I love you, man. But I have to say what I have to say. Love his wife, love his kid, and, and him. But I have, to say what, I have to say what I have to say. He says he don't believe in the incarnation. Well... That's just a deal, though. You have to. You have to. It's not only the activity that proves that you're a child of God. <laughs> no. It's if you believe the doctrines of Christ. That shows forth and gives testimony who you really are. It's the two things. It's the fruit of doctrine and the fruit of conduct that Show somebody, okay, like James says, you show me your faith without your works, and I show you my faith by my works. See, but it's faith and works, but not works to be saved, though. It's, it's works that come after salvation, okay, that authenticates your Christianity, not just the, not give, not, doesn't give you justification in the sight of God, not justification in the sight of men. He says, you show me, I show you. There you go. You know, you're not justified by works. No, you're not. Romans 3.20. You can live until you're blue in the face and you're never going to be justified by your works. Never. You could be Mother Teresa, and with this I'm going to close, okay? You could be Mother Teresa, okay, and do the most amazing works, Okay? Well, she lived, uh, I think she was born in 1910 and died in 1997 and was what? Canonized or whatever? Glorified, I don't know. Or eulogized, something like that in, in 2003 or six or something, whatever. I don't know. And let me give you an example. Though. I'm not judging her, but I'm just giving you an example because I don't know who else to give, though. But I'll give her. Do you know if she did not trust in Christ as Savior and Lord, do you know that she is not in heaven now at all? And she's awaiting judgment? I'm saying if all those works that Mother Teresa did can't even help her. 
Oh, but I, I'm not as good as Mother Teresa. What should I do? Well, you call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. You and your house.